JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week February 28th until March the 4th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a very busy week ahead of us with uh, the Russian, uh, the Russia-Ukraine crisis on investors' um, uh, front page uh, of their agendas. We have two central bank decisions: the RBA and the Bank of Canada. We have a Powell uh, Fed chair Powell's testimony before uh, before the U.S. Congress. We also have the U.S. employment report and several other important. Uh, releases. However, let's take things from the beginning and start from today. Today, we already got some economic releases like Japan's industrial production and retail, and retail sales both for January, as well as Australia's A and Z business confidence index for February and the nation's retail sales for January. Japan's industrial production and deteriorated 1.3% month over month after shrinking 1% in December, but retail sales accelerated 1.6% year over year from 1.2%. In Australia, the, the ANZ index fell further into the negative territory in February, while the nation's retail sales rebounded 1.8% month over month after tumbling 4.4% in December. Now, as for the rest of the day, we don't have any major market moving any major market moving indicator on the agenda, but that's far from suggesting a quiet trading day. Investors are more worried uh, on geopolitics and uh, and Russia's invasion in Ukraine. The attack began on Thursday, uh, resulting in a sell-off in uh, risky assets and a rally in safe havens. However, Later in the same day, investors appeared willing to add back some risk to their portfolios after um, the U.S. and other Western uh, nations decided to redouble their efforts to, uh, to, to curb Russia's ability to do, to do business with uh, sanctions, including freezing bank, bank assets and, cut, and uh, cutting off state-owned enterprises. This may have sparked some hopes that the sanctions could force Russia to back down without any other nation getting um, militarily involved. However, remember that on Friday we said that it was too early to assume uh, that uh, something like that is possible. Indeed, the situation escalated further over the weekend with the West announcing more and stricter sanctions including uh, blocking some uh, banks from the from from the swift international uh, payment system while russian uh, president putin responded by by putting nuclear armed forces on high alert this resulted in markets opening uh, the week in a risk averse uh, in a, in, a, in a risk averse mode yes ukrainian and russian officials eventually agreed to meet uh, for talks on the Belarusian border with Ukraine, but unless we get concrete signs over a potential resolution, we are reluctant to call for a strong rebound. As long as the situation continues to worsen, we will consider the path of least resistance for equities, uh, for equities and other risk-linked assets to be to the downside. Now, on Tuesday, besides the conflict in Ukraine, traders of uh, the risk-linked Aussie may pay attention to the RBA decision as well. At the prior meeting, officials decided to keep interest rates untouched at 0.10% and announced the end of their quantitative easing purchases, as was broadly expected. 
However, in the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that while inflation has picked up, it is too early to conclude that it is sustainably within the target band and that they will uh, not increase the cash rate until that happens. However, market participants remain convinced that the bank will hike to 0.25% around June or July, while they see the official cash rate reaching 1.25% by the end of the year. Officials are widely, are widely expected to stand pat at this meeting as well, but it will be interesting to see whether they will sound a bit more hoggish due to the better than expected employment report and retail sales for January, which were released in the aftermath of the last gathering. This could support somewhat the Aussie, while the opposite may be true if we get a reiteration of the same uh, cautious message. After all, we did not get any CPI data yet, and perhaps officials prefer to see where inflation is headed before they decide to change, uh, their, uh, to change their language. In any case, whatever the reaction to the RBA decision is, everything could change very soon, and this is because the Aussie is a risk-linked currency and thus any change in the broader market sentiment due to the ongoing, due to the ongoing political, geopolitical tensions could well leave... Um, uh, could well leave their marks on uh, on this currency. Now, later in the day, Germany's preliminary inflation data for uh, February are coming out, with both the CPA and the HICP rates expected to have drifted further north. Specifically, the CPI rate is forecast to inch up to 5.1% from, uh, from 4.9%, while the HICP one expected to have risen to 5.4% from 5.1%. From Canada, we have uh, the GDP numbers for the fourth quarter and for the month of uh, December. The annualized quarter over quarter rate is expected to have risen to 6.2% from 5.4%, but the monthly uh, rate for December is expected to have slid to 0.1% from 0.6%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates untouched at 0.25% at a time when the financial community was expecting a hike. In the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that the Council expects rates to increase and that the overall economic slug is now absorbed, which means that they are more likely to hit the hike button at uh, this week's gathering. Therefore, with that in mind and also taking account and also taking account the upside surprise in the, CPI's, uh, in the CPI numbers for January, we doubt that the slowdown in economic activity for the month of uh, December will be enough to prevent officials from pushing the hike button on Wednesday. After all, for the quarter as a whole, the economy is forecast to have improved. Elsewhere, we have the final uh, market manufacturing PMIs for February from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, and that, as it is usually the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. From the US, we also get the ISM manufacturing index for the month, which is forecast to have risen fractionally to 58 from 57.6. Now on Wednesday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada. And as we already noted, we see and a strong chance for a rate hike to 0.50% from 0.25%. However, this is the market consensus as well, and thus we don't expect the quarter point hike by itself to move much the loony. If indeed the hike is delivered, cut traders may quickly turn uh, their attention to the accompanying uh, statement for clues and hints as to how fast officials are willing to proceed with uh, subsequent rate hikes. If they appear willing to proceed with a relatively steep rate path in order to cap uh, accelerating inflation, the loon is likely to gain. Besides the Bank of Canada decision, though, traders of the Canadian dollar may also pay attention to the OPEC Plus decision. Despite the ongoing conflict, the ongoing, uh, conflict between Russia and Ukraine uh, pushing oil prices above $100 per barrel, the cartel and its allies are not expected to accelerate their plan of gradually scaling back their supply cuts. This may allow oil prices to rebound and continue, tra and continue trending north, a factor that um, could also prove supportive uh, for the Canadian dollar. Let's not forget that Canada is the fifth the largest oil producing nation in the whole world, while it holds, it holds the sixth place in terms of exports. 
Now, in the US, Fed Chair Jerome Powell will testify on monetary policy before the House Financial Services Committee on Wednesday and again before the Senate Banking Committee on Thursday. At the latest FOMC gathering, Powell sounded more hawkish than expected, cementing expectations over a rate hike uh, in March and encouraging market, market participants to price in around six quarter point increases by the end of this year. Remember that the December dot plot pointed to only three. That said, some may have been scratching their heads as to whether the crisis in Eastern Europe will weigh again against an aggressive, uh, excuse me, in Eastern Europe. Excuse me, that says some may have been scratching their heads as to whether the crisis in Eastern Europe will weigh against an aggressive, an aggressive attempt to curb inflation. In our view, that's not the case. Actually, it might be the opposite. The crisis is pushing oil prices higher, which could result in further acceleration in inflation around the globe. Something like that could force policymakers to act more, aggressive, more aggressively than previously thought. So, with uh, that logic in mind, we expect uh, Powell to maintain the view that the March hike is on the table and that more are in the works for the months to come. This is likely to fuel further the dollar's uh, latest advance. Now, as for, was, uh, for, as for Wednesday's economic indicators, during the Asian session, we have Australia's uh, GDP for the fourth quarter, which is, ex is expected to have shrunk at a steeper rate than in, qu in quarter three, something that may drive the year-over-year -year rate down to 3% from 3.9%. Now, conditional upon the RBA sounding cautious again on Tuesday, this is likely to add some credence to officials' view and may eventually prompt market participants to scale back their expectations with regards to future interest rate increases. Now, during the European session, Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for February are coming out, with the headline rate expected to have risen to 5.3% from 5.1%, the core one to jump to 2.7% from 2.4%. Remember that at the press conference following the latest ECB decision, President Lagarde said that inflation remained elevated for longer than previously thought and that the economy was hurt less than anticipated by the pandemic. She also added that the March and June meetings will be essential for evaluating their guidance, which means that they could, after all, decide to lift trades this year. Although she pushed against expectations over a summer rate increase in the aftermath of that gathering, accelerating inflation could encourage some participants to add back to such bets, which could prove supportive for the euro. However, we don't expect any positive reaction in the common currency to last for long in case the Russia-Ukraine crisis continues. Further escalation could quickly bring uh, the euro bank back under selling interest. Now, on Thursday, during the Asian session, China's uh, Kaijin Services PMI for February is coming out, but no forecast is available. We get more February PMIs later in the day, but those are the final market services and composite indices from the Eurozone, the UK, and the US, which are once again expected to confirm their, prelim their preliminary estimates. Investors may pay more attention to the USS uh, ISM Non-Manufacturing Index for February, which is expected to have ticked up to 61 from 59.9. As we already noted, we also have Fed Chair Powell's testimony before the Senate Banking Committee. Now, finally, on Friday, the main item on the economic agenda is the U.S. employment report for February. Non-farm payrolls are forecast to have slowed somewhat to 450,000 from 467,000 in January, but the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 3.9% to from 4%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have accelerated somewhat to 5.8% year over year from 5.7%, which adds uh, to the case of further acceleration in inflation in the months to come. In our view, despite a small slowdown in NFPs, the slide in the unemployment rate and the acceleration in wages are likely to keep expectations over a March hike and multiple more thereafter elevated. Something like that is likely to keep the US dollar supported, while it may add pressure to equities, even if the crisis in Ukraine ends beforehand. Yes, we are very likely to experience a relief bounce in case we have a resolution, but expectations over aggressive tightening means higher borrowing costs for companies sooner, as well as uh, lower present values, especially for high growth firms, 
which are valued based on discounted uh, expected cash flows for the months and years ahead. Therefore, we believe that for the near term, the risk for equities, the risks uh, for equities are are tilted to the downside. As for the rest of uh, Friday's data, we get Eurozone's retail sales for January and Canada's IV PMI for February. Eurozone's retail sales are uh, expected to have rebounded 1.5% month over month after tumbling 3% the previous uh, month, while no forecast is available for Canada's IV index. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.